Hi, this is Lance Spencer Yu, and we are here 38 meters below ground at the Metro Manila subway here at North Avenue. And it was quite a walk to get here. So the, if you look over there, there's actually stairs going down from the ground level all the way here, 38 meters below, uh, to stand right behind me uh, with the tunnel boring machine. So you might be wondering, what is a tunnel boring machine exactly? Uh, we actually spoke with some engineers about it, but to put it more simply, it's a machine that digs the tunnels. All right, so let's talk a bit about the subway. Uh, we were here earlier with Secretary Jimmy Bautista, uh, the, de the Department of Transportation Secretary, and he led the ceremonial launch of this tunnel boring machine to start digging. So this tunnel boring machine uh, will dig the tunnel from here, North Avenue, uh, going to the Tandang Sora station. Um, so this isn't the first tunnel to be made. Uh, earlier, last um, January 2023, uh, Secretary Jimmy Bautista was with Marcos, uh, President Marcos, to lead the very first uh, digging of the Metro Manila subway. That was back up north in the East Valenzuela station. So this is now the, the second tunnel boring machine to start digging from here, North Avenue. And right beside us is another tunnel boring machine uh, that will start digging uh, around three months after or in July 2024. So again, you can imagine uh, a tunnel from the north and a tunnel from the south uh, moving uh, and they plan to connect and allow full operations for this segment of the subway. Uh, all the way in 2029, still a bit of a time away, uh, but as Secretary Bautista put it, uh, this signifies the point of no return, the, the actual digging and construction of these tunnels. So yes, we can actually see right behind me the, the mechanisms pushing, and we actually asked a bit of engineering, uh, a bit of engineers to talk about how this actually works, this feat of engineering works. Sir Ariel, baka pwedeng ma-explain naman yung ibang machines na parang ganito din sa ibang countries. So, itong uh, TBM na made from Japan, which is JIMT, is the same siya ng, sa German company. Ang uh, nag-originate talaga ng TBM is from German, which is the Hereknek. So, pareho lang din naman siya. Pareho din yung EPB. Ang sizes lang yung medyo magkaiba. Pero same din din ng concept pati yung pag erect ng segment, pati din yung sa, sa pagboboring niya. Pareho lang din ng, ano, ng uh, method and then uh, ng kanyang tunneling. So ganun din po, parang automatic na ilalagay yung yes, concrete uh, na ano? Uh, individual segment, ini-install uh, siya. And then same din, same din diameter same. ng uh, uh, ring niya, yung segment niya. Parang hindi naman mahirap gawin to compared to yung ibang projects, ganun. Kasi siguro yung, yung concern ng iba is, di ba parang lulusot to underneath yung Mindanao Avenue, hindi ba parang ma-affect yung stability ng road, ganun? No sir, uh, uh, wala po sila mararamdaman dito na ito ay matatapos na hanggang sa mag-breakthrough. Ma malalaman na lang po ito, gawa na siya. Wala pong, wala pong movement dito in, in, uh, in, in, in sa ground level. So no safety concerns naman ganun? Safe po ito sir uh, actually, uh, very safe po siya which is uh, also uh, uh, practices na rin sa ibang bansa, yung mga developed uh, country na. And as in pwede pang tumayo ng mga building, high rise, ganun? Yes sir, uh, wala, wala pong ano, wala pong, wala pong, ano, wala pong magiging issue. Sa pagkahukay natin, meron tayo na tinatawag na screw conveyor. Uh, sa screw conveyor na yun, lahat ng na... Lahat ng nahuhukay natin, mapupunta sa screw conveyor and then matatransfer dito sa ating soil pipe. So now that we know a bit about how this engineering, uh, engineering works are happening, uh, we can talk a bit about the subway itself. So what we know so far is there are 17 stations from Valenzuela all the way down to Paranaque with a spur line or a branching line going to Naia Terminal 3. So the first station up north will be in East Valenzuela and the southest, the most south station, will be in Bikutan. So if you're a commuter, you know, tired of getting stuck in traffic, this might just be your solution because according to the DOTR, 
Uh, this will slash travel time if you're going from Valenzuela to Naia uh, from one hour and 30 minutes just now to 41 minutes. So it's quite a big uh, cut in terms of travel time. Um, and what we're seeing here behind us is actually just the first package. So the subway project is divided into several packages. And this first package is covering three stations and the depot of the subway. So you have the East Valenzuela station, the Carina Highway station, the Tandang Sora station, uh, and the North Avenue station. So that's what this first contract covers. Now Marcos previously said that he hopes that it would be finished by um, 2027. Uh, but uh, when we talked with Secretary Bautista earlier, he said that it might take until 2029 because of certain issues uh, such as right of way. So uh, I guess we'll see. But when we're talking about the full timeline of the entire subway, uh, this actually broke ground back in 2019. So imagine before the pandemic. But uh, and full operations were slated for 2025, but the first three stations only really began uh, much later uh, with tunneling for this East Valenzuela station happening in 2023. And now full operations, like I mentioned earlier, is projected for 2029. So what's standing in the way exactly? Um, right of way issues. So we spoke with Secretary Bautista earlier, and this is what he said. Yung, mga, yung issues natin sa right of way, no? uh, ito ay uh, kasama yung negotiation with uh, the owners of uh, private properties na tatamaan ng ating project. No? For example, yung uh, ating mga stations, no? uh, these are uh, presently owned by uh, private sectors. No? So kailangan makipag-coordinate uh, makipag kami and uh, makipag-agree kami na magkaroon kami ng possession doon sa mga properties na to, no? Uh, meron din kaming issue with uh, uh, some uh, other agencies, no? Uh, for example, uh, isa sa mga problema namin, yung isang station natin ay may tatamaan na isang uh, building, no? Na pag-aari ng uh, Department of Education, no? And uh, that building is considered uh, a heritage site, no? So, kailangan important uh, cultural uh, property you know? and uh, kailangan ayusin natin paano, paano natin mailipat yung building or posibleng ilipat din yung station. No? So dapat ayusin muna natin yan. Isa yan sa mga major issues na hinaharap namin ngayon. No? Uh, also, yung uh, meron kaming mga issues with uh, owners of properties na ayaw nilang dumaan yung uh, Metro Manila subway under their properties no so we're uh, working with them we're negotiating with them na payagan ang gobyerno na mag-operate itong ating mga tunnel boring machines no sa ilalim ng kanilang properties no but uh, we are on top of this no and uh, we're expecting that we should be able to resolve all these uh, right of way issues uh, in due time no uh, but still uh, we're uh, expecting that we should be able to complete this project by uh, 2029. Okay, so now let's talk a bit about the history of subways. So as you might imagine, uh, this isn't the first time that a subway has been planned for the Philippines. In fact, the plan for a subway, it was originated more than 50 years ago. So back in 1973, that was the uh, administration of uh, the father of Marcos, so Ferdinand Marcos Sr., he was the one who first thought of a subway. So um, back then, JICA, which was under a different name, it wasn't called JICA back then, uh, JICA made a study of Metro Manila and proposed that they develop a rapid uh, trail, a rail transit network uh, that has an underground system, or, or otherwise a subway, and that would have five lines. Uh, but sadly, that idea never pushed through. So Marcos didn't push through with the idea of uh, making a subway and instead opted to make the uh, LRT-1. So that was ultimately what they decided to do. So after the Marcos senior administration, uh, plans for the subway sort of died down. Although uh, the administration of Noina Aquino revived talks, revived plans for a subway, um, but also, that didn't pan out because of disagreements with the alignment. 
So it was only really in 2019, during the administration of uh, Duterte, that plans for the subway were finally approved by uh, NEDA. So that eventually led to where we are today, where we're standing today. But as you know, it would take five more years from uh, the time that it was approved by NEDA for the tunneling and excavation to actually take place. So let's talk also a bit about uh, money. So where is the money for these uh, machines, these contractors coming from? Because uh, the contractor, for example, for this one, it's a Filipino-Japanese consortium that had to import many of these equipments and many of the personnel uh, from abroad. So where's the money for all these coming from? So the project cost, the entire cost of this project is estimated to be about 488 0.5 billion pesos. So that's quite a big amount and the government plans to fund it mostly using money from uh, JICA loans. So we have the first tranche back in 2018 that was worth about 47 billion pesos and then we have another tranche. This one was more recent, 2022. It was 112 billion. And finally, uh, just earlier, we, can, we got confirmation that we will receive another tranche of money uh, within this month, hopefully, of 55 billion. So that's March 2024, um, expected to get another 55 billion from a JICA loan. Now the question is really, uh, will all this money and will all this work finally be able to solve our problems of traffic congestion, traffic woes, or will it just be another burden, another debt for the government to pay? Um, we'll really only find out several years from now when the subway finally, hopefully, starts operations in 2029. But until then, we'll have to wait. This is Lance Spencer Yu, Rappler, Quezon City.